Hi everybody, this is Night All Fibers, a crafting podcast. This is my mom, Brenda. This is my daughter, Rachel. And today is episode 68. I feel like we've been stuck in the 60s forever. We have, yeah. I mean, we've been taking a little longer in between episodes, which just happens. I'd rather bring good content, you know, and actually have enough to talk about than rush it and just stick to a schedule for the sake of it. Besides, life happens. Yes, it does. Um, Today is June 10th, mm -hmm. and we're coming to you from Southeast Texas, so welcome yes. to all of our old viewers, or previous viewers, and anyone that's new. We are really glad that you are here mm -hmm. to share some crafting time with us, so grab something to drink, something to craft upon, and stay tuned to the end because we have a winner to announce. We do. It was so great to hear everybody's comments on the last one. Mm -hmm. with they would use the mini scheme set, and we can't wait to share the winner with you at the end. Yeah, and thank you to everyone who wished my husband well on his surgery mm -hmm. and congratulated my oldest daughter on her new job. Both are going very well. Um, the surgery went really well. Recovery's mm -hmm. been going slow, but um, he's recovering, so yep. that's the important thing. He gets to go back to work tonight. Yes. So that's the good thing. Mm-hmm. Other than that, life has just been settling down again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it feels like with the heat, our crafting and creating has been kind of pittering out. Yeah, I would say so. I, yeah. I've i been wanting to cast on new things, but I just haven't been finding the time, so. I did cast on new things. Yeah. One new thing. Well, maybe we can grab something, taste it a drink, and sit down and enjoy some crafting together. So on to stitch by stitch, and I only have two things to show this time. I have two things to show. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so that works out. I have more things on my needles, but they didn't get any love, so why show them? Yeah, exactly. Well, okay. actually, I only have two things on the needles, but I get what you mean. Yeah. Okay, I am working on my wild card socks two at a time by chicken lady fiber arts i will show you the card mm -hmm. here's your card and i think this is a colorway always sunny in philadelphia is that the show i think it's the show i've never actually watched it so i, I wouldn't either. know the reference um i'm doing them two at a time cuff down heel flap and gusset mm -hmm. it was so funny we went to a pre-op appointment for my husband and i pulled these out and the muggles were out, y'all. I was... Yeah, you were getting looks. I was getting looks. I, I was, wasn't with you, but I 100% <laughs> believe. I, people were staring, and um, yeah. an older gentleman said to his wife, she's knitting socks. And so his wife just kept staring at me the whole entire time. And even Dad picked up on the staring. It wasn't just yeah, you know, and that's, getting self-conscious. It actually was. He doesn't pick up on social cues much at all. Yeah. Um, and then we went over to the hospital so he could have um, an EKG done and some blood work before surgery. And another older gentleman said to me, are you knitting or crocheting? I said, I'm knitting. It's different, right? I'm like, yes, it's different. Well, what are you making, a sweater? And I said, no, I'm making socks. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I can see. So yeah. it was kind of funny. But I was down here where the, that marker was. Mm -hmm. So I made good progress. Um, there hasn't been much knitting time with everything going on and taking care of everyone. Mm -hmm. I have the little light bulb stitch markers on the leg to remind myself that I did 50 rows on the leg. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think I was, last time I measured, three inches away from starting my toe. Mm -hmm. And I am really, really, really enjoying the two at a time. Once and, you got past the heel. Once I got past the heel, and I'm yeah. going to talk about that when I do, when we do all stitch together. But awesome. I'm using this beautiful bag by Cherry Pie Cottage. I love her bags. Mm -hmm. They are the perfect size. Yeah. So, yes, I am loving this. 
Um, so that's my first stitch by stitch. Okay, I made an impressive one inch, I think, of progress <laughs> on my featherweight by Hannah Fettig. So this is again in the Malabrigo lace. It's growing! It is growing, and I think I'm pretty close to being able to separate for sleeves because when you unroll the back of the neck, that's actually pretty substantial. That is substantial, yes. For the length. Because that's um, lace weight, so it is. you know, when you consider but that it's, it's such a fine... a fingering weight gauge, so even if I were using fingering weight yarn, it would still be this amount of fabric. So technically... But still, it's impressive yeah. because it's such a fine... Yeah, and it's so light. Mm -hmm. Here's the cake of yarn. And, um... I'm really happy with how it's feeling and can't wait to actually get to work on it. Since there's only two projects on my needles now, I think it'll actually get some substantial progress done soon. You only have two works in progress? Or yeah, two stitch by yeah. Stitch. But I have some things I want to talk about that I'll probably cast on soon. I am going to move my progress keeper. It's this cute little cup. That was a lemon little in bitty it. delight. Yeah, from Little Bitty Delight. Yeah. It's super cute. I, I had bought markers. it as a stitch marker, and then I just put the lobster claw on myself, and so the lobster claw doesn't match the rest because all we had was bronze. That's okay. Or something. I can't, I don't think it's quite bronze, but that's okay. It, my featherweight is coming along, and my progress keeper's moved up so I won't get confused and think I've already done an inch. Well, now that you have that one other big project done, yes. that will get more love. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, a podcast I love to watch, well, we love to watch together, Yes. is Rose Opal Knits. If you haven't watched um, Erica and Daphne, you need to go check them mm -hmm. out. It's a mother and daughter-in-law, and I just love their relationship, and all their projects are so inspiring. Erica was working on this Dureco pattern by Allison Green and it was designed for Barocco and it was designed for this Remix Light. Yes. Sorry the label Which is... you already had in your stash. I have this in my stash, yes, because I bought it last year when we did a little bit of the Houston Yarn Trail. We didn't do all mm -hmm. of the stores, we just went to a couple that we'd never been to before. Yeah, which was really nice. And this is actually 30% nylon, 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, and 9% linen. Mm -hmm. And it says machine wash in cold water on delicate cycle, lay flat to dry. Now you'd hand wash it, right? I would hand wash this, but it is, I was kind of worried, am I going to like this type because I've no, I've not had Plant much luck. Fibers have I've not, not had been. much luck with cotton before. It just Other kept than growing just and growing and growing. Yeah. Yeah. As far as garments, and mm -hmm. I wasn't really sure, but I thought, you know what? I have this in my stash. Yeah. This was a free pattern. Yeah, and you when, had the right quantity in your stash. And I had too. the yes, I did. Win, win. Can't be any better than that. So. Yeah. And this feels so incredibly soft, y'all. Yeah, you don't normally think of plant fibers as something that would be soft, and I know it has a lot of synthetic material in it, but it's still a cool, yes. comfortable so material. This is where I'm at. You start at the top, and you do short rows, flat, back and forth, before you join in the round, mm -hmm. to bring that up in the back, and this feels so soft. It really and does. And it's so light. I, I have three mm -hmm. skeins in this bag, and I pick it up, and I'm like, do I have all my yarn in there? <laughs> and it's I like that really, there's little eyelets. There are. Um, right it's here. It's got a neat texture at the top, and then it has yeah. um, shaping for your waist, but I'm going to omit that and just do it up straight, straight down. Straight, yeah. Because I was in between sizes. And I did not swatch. I know. Bad. But I wanted to just... I liked the way I got this fabric. Yeah, so you just went with it. So I'm using a size 4. And I did go down because normally when I block things... Down in garment size, right? No, I went down in garment size and I went down in needle size. So I'm doing these in a size 4. Mm -hmm. But I think that when I block it, it will grow enough 
to fit just the way I like my sweaters to fit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've just been really zooming on this and really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. My featherweight, no, not my featherweight, my play date got maybe half an inch done. I was, I took yeah. that with us when we went to surgery day mm -hmm. and I didn't touch it. Yeah, I, I just okay. didn't. You had socks with you as well. Which was much easier to work on because it was shorter yeah. rows and it was just in the round. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, check out this pattern because it is a lovely yes. pattern. I'm like 11 rows away from raglan shaping and then I am really hoping I will have this done in time to go to the trunk show at yeah. the end of the month. That could, I mean, the way that that's been your primary project, the it one has. you're getting the most yes. love to, yeah. I think you could really have it yeah. done by then. I just, I love it. It's so soft to work on. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to see how it's going to block out. Yeah. I may have ordered a pale pink, yeah. three skeins of pale pink to do another one. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. What so, else do you have, Miss Rachel? The only other project on my needles, I do not think I showed it last episode. If I did, I'm very sorry, but it again has had no progress done. <laughs> and my goal, I'm showing it because I have a goal to get through the second and third lattice chart pattern. So you can see the diamonds, I hope. Yeah, I can see them. Yeah. And I have the provisional cast on, so I'm hoping to get through the second and third lattice chart pattern. It's a slip stitch technique and twisted slip stitches, I believe. Mm. And it's really pretty. I am using Sweet Tea Yarns in light wash denim. And what's the pattern name again? It is going to be on the screen <laughs> because I don't remember. <laughs> Um, I think Summer Trellis. I think so. I think it's Summer Trellis. Yeah. Um, but I just had to work so hard on the sweater that I was knitting for my sister because I was afraid it wouldn't get done in time for her birthday. For her birthday. Which is Sunday. Which is Sunday and it's done. So. I can't believe she's going to be 26. Lesson to be learned. Probably not best to cast on three sweaters at once because <laughs> inevitably some of them are going to suffer and not get worked on. Um, yeah, so. I think it's good. I used to be a monogamous knitter and I think it's yeah. better for me to, to have, have several. Variety. Yes, to have several projects yeah. to pick up and knit on when, whatever I feel like knitting on. Yeah. And that was one of my goals this year was not to feel pressured to knit anything but just knit mm -hmm. it because I wanted to. Yeah, I can definitely understand that. Um, so, and the thing is, I have wanted to knit on both of these sweaters, but between the sock knitting, trying to keep up with that for my club colors, mm -hmm. and Rebecca's sweater, and then the pittering out of Knitting Mojo, these two yeah. sweaters, I cast them on in April, didn't I? I think so. Yeah. Do you write it down June? Somewhere? No. Sometimes <laughs> at the end of the year I go back to past episodes and just speed through them and write down, okay, this project, this project, and I make a list of everything I've finished in the year, mm -hmm. but I don't write down the dates. But I know that I swatched for these in April, so I'm pretty sure I cast them on in April. I guess to make my progress keep Oh, you do! Yay! Yay. So that is all of my stitch by stitch. Yeah, I do have my husband's firefighter socks on the needles, and yep. I still have the design that I'm doing for Rainbow Sock Chronicles. My yellow, which was what, April? April or March? April. No, it was April. It was yeah. April. I have not touched those, and I don't think I'm going to finish the Rainbow Sock Chronicles this year. But you can carry it over to next year. Yes, because just... I have all the yarn pulled out, and I yeah. do want to knit stuff. It's just, I don't do good with knit-alongs. I really don't. And that's okay. I mean, you enjoyed it for the first three months. I did. And I'm all gung ho and then yeah. blah. And you know? year-long knit-alongs can be really hard to keep up with because you never know what the year has in store. True. And Very true. You also didn't think you were going to knit a cast on as many tops as you have this year. No, I didn't. So, I mean socks, sweaters, as long as you're just enjoying it, 
I think that's, that's what matters. Yeah, that's the important thing. Okay, so I will talk about my sister's finished girlfriend's cardigan. Yay! And the designer whose name will be on the screen. Okay, so here it is, all finished. The sleeves, which were picked up around this I-cord edging. And then you did a faux I-cord down the sleeve and the ribbing. So I worked those one at a time. And then I had her try it on and she wanted a collar. So I had talked last time about how I wanted to do the collar. And you can see how the collar is a little, it's about two inches down here. Mm -hmm. It's only about one inch up here. And I had to do, picked up all the stitches, knit a few rows, and then I started working short rows from about where it hits right here. Collarbone? Collarbone, mm -hmm. yeah. I um, put it on extra long interchangeable cords mm -hmm. and tried it on. And the neck pulls the fronts up a bit. So that ending comes up like that. So that would be straight. And then it just kind of pulls it up because it just didn't work with the design as well as I thought. Well, the original but pattern doesn't have the it doesn't. collar band. The collar band was um, improvised. Mod modification, improvised. Yeah. yeah. And next time I would probably just do the collar, pick up all the stitches and knit it like a normal collar band, and pick up extra stitches along this right here. The V, the, where it comes to a V. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I think I can show it. You can yeah. see where the I cords come to a V point right here. Mm -hmm. I would pick up as many stitches as I possibly could because what I did was I picked up four stitches for every five rows and that worked well on the front mm -hmm. but not on the neck. Would you do it next time so, without a collar? I would. Do um, if I were to do it for myself, I would do it without a collar. And so I'll put it on quickly so that you can see. Normally I insert pictures, but I'll just put this on because that's easy enough. No, you fail. And I did 20 inches on the body, and I think it grew about 4 inches, maybe 5 inches. Mm -hmm. So here's how it looks with the drop shoulder, and the colors don't look too weird. So it's nice. Well, you and didn't long. alternate skeins, so no, it's kind of you got more orangey in here, and then yeah. you know. But she doesn't so, care. She doesn't care at all. And she's just. She was so funny the other night. She goes, "I promise, I am knit worthy." <laughs> yeah. So I'll take her sweater off now, so that way it's nice for her birthday. It's been blocked. That's why the body grew so much. But she's that's like, nice because she really likes long cardigans. Said, it's so soft. <sighs> yep. And out of the three skeins I was going to use, I had to add an extra skein because she wanted it extra long. So I and used four skeins. Yeah. So I used four skeins, and this is what I have left. So you can probably see the color difference. This one's more silver and cool tone, and this has like a pink undertone. undertone. Mm -hmm. And that was just different dye lots. I used a dye lot that I had caked up in my stash and I thought I'll just use up this and put it with this batch and mm -hmm. I should have alternated. I didn't and that's okay. Because she doesn't care. Yeah. She really doesn't. It shows up more on the camera. It really does. Than it does in real life. Especially after blocking. You yeah. don't notice it as much. Yep. Okay. Yep. So what else have you finished? Okay. I have worked on the almost lost washcloth, which is a free pattern, and I will mm -hmm. put the link down below, um, because who doesn't love a free pattern? Yeah. And I used a super size Sugar Lily and Cream in the Earth Ombre, mm -hmm. which I've had since forever, and I made two washcloths. And after I finished them, I thought, it's so pretty with this little lace detail. I don't know if you can see it, the little eyelets. Mm -hmm. 
um, these would make good trivets for hot, um, like on your dining room table when you want to put a hot mm -hmm. pot or a hot pan or yeah. hot dish. Hot dish, that's what I was thinking of. On your table, you could just put this down or you could use it yeah. under plants. Mm -hmm. Abby. I'm sorry, she just likes to tear around the bed. Or you can put it under, underneath plants so that when you water them, you don't get your windowsill all wet. But yeah, I have enough left of this super size yarn to do maybe a corner to corner washcloth. That would be nice. But this was a really nice change. It was, mm -hmm. you know, I could do a little wedge because you have to do 14 wedges and then you seam it together and then you pull the center closed. Mm -hmm. And I could just, in between taking care of my husband and um, cooking dinner and doing dishes and whatever, I could just sit down and knit a wedge or two, yeah. stop, pick it up again, you know, whenever so. I wanted to. So it was very relaxing and it was a way to use up some of the cotton, the free pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. That looked great. I used, I think, a size 8 needle. Okay. So, yeah, if you're looking for another way to use up your cotton stash and the different look, mm -hmm. give it a try. Okay, so Alrighty. I have my Gilmore Girls socks for June and this was the first one and up here there's a little ladybug. Is that where you were the last time? That's where time? I was the last time. I was so close to finishing the first one the last time. Because you did those toe up. Yeah, I did it toe up and I did them one at a time. And then I cast on my second one. And I have a cloud on there just to have a cloud. And I did this whole one within the course of two, three days. So it didn't take me long, but it was the only pair of socks on the needles. And after finishing the sweater, I just needed shorter rows. I didn't want to work on something really The long. largest part of your sweater is when you're doing your raglan increases or your um, yeah. circular yoke, whatever yeah. the pattern is. Mm -hmm. I just needed something that was short. So I did these. This mm -hmm. was the You Quiched My Room, uh, which is available now until the 15th or 16th. Midnight of the 15th, yeah, Sunday mid standard time. And so if you do want this colorway, it's still available now. And yeah, I'm excited to cast on new socks since I have no socks on the needles. And you have the new colorways yeah, already dyed up. Yeah, so that <laughs> might get cast on before it gets released. Yeah. So that way I can show people um, what it looks like. You were saying something about the heel you used last night. We were talking uh, about the heel. Yes, well... I still have to weave in ends and because I use a contrast heel it's not as tidy right there. But what we were talking about is that with my afterthought heel that I used to use all the time, it would sometimes slip below and I would think I would need a lot more and pull really tight. And it would pull here. tight across the instep. And this OMG heel does a lot better with that. I don't have to knit as much on the shorty sock to make mm -hmm. it stay up on my ankles because the heel stays on my heel. It sits better on it your heel. It sits better on my yeah. heel. And as far as the instep goes, the OMG did help with it, but it didn't make it completely better. I had to go up and stitch count. I like negative ease in my socks, and I think I was knitting too, too much, much negative ease mm -hmm. because it was pulling and straining yeah. the stitches on the top, which would ultimately, I think, create a weak spot in your sock and they would wear out faster yeah um if it's constantly being pulled super tight right and in rubbing here. in your shoe yeah and rubbing mm -hmm. in your shoe so i did these with a 64 stitch count sock and i did the medium size omg heel and it was really nice um the only thing is next time i do a pair of socks i think i want to do the umbrella toe toe up that's and a fun one. That's from Kay Jones. Mm -hmm. It's in some of her sock mm -hmm. patterns. I don't know which one off the top of my head. She has an umbrella sock. Okay. So you, if you just Google umbrella sock. And you'll be able to get both versions. To yeah, and she has it on Ravelry and Lovecrafts. Okay, thank you for that yep. because mm -hmm. yeah. I was not aware on which area to find it. Yeah. I am going to try the OMG heel on your dad's firefighter socks because yeah. I'm doing those toe up. Yep. So. Yeah. And here is the Friends colorway for June. Yep, the one and where everybody finds out. The 
one where everybody knows. Everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. and I just had a black um, mini skein mini laying, around. laying around, so I just used that for the heel because it was mm -hmm. nighttime when everybody found out. Was yeah. it? It was throughout the day. It was throughout the day, but, but anyway, the main, like the the main funny it. scene was at Even. night. Yeah, so yeah, I have both of them done. This is what I was working on when my husband had a surgery, and the nurse who was taking care of him in pre-op mm -hmm. uh, was telling her all about Rachel's business, and she's like, oh, I love socks. I'll have to check out her website. And my husband picked up on that, too, and he goes, you have to order the yarn and then make the socks yourself. She doesn't sell yeah. the hand-knitted socks. Oh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I finished a whole sock pretty much mm -hmm. in a day. Yeah, that's actually, the nice thing about Actually, it was about right here. I had just finished the gusset decreases, so I finished the rest of the sock. The that, foot and the toe. The foot of the and the sock. toe that day. So, yeah. and this color is also still available until midnight. Mm -hmm. Central Standard Time, June 15th. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you want to get that colorway, they do get re-released, but I try to wait six months to a year. Mm -hmm. um, they get re-released in the next calendar year. That's more accurate to say. Yeah. Um, so I have some things I want to cast on. I so do too. Do you want, what do you want to go into now? Um, let's go into our post. Awesome. I have a lot of things to talk about. Awesome. We were in Joanne's one day and I found this wonderful book, Knitted Animal Friends. And it has the most adorable animals in here with yeah. clothes and shoes and... They have full outfits. Full outfits and it is so adorable and my goal is to someday have a box of knitted animals and if we ever have grandchildren mm -hmm. that when they come over they have soft toys to play with at grandma's house. Yes. So um, I am going to wait to get started on these because I want to order the sheep she's yarn. And that way you're closer to the gauge and you don't end up, an animal that's supposed to be this big ends up being this yeah, big. Yeah, exactly. So um, future knitting, future goals. And it's just so adorable. The detail on these is... They have a ram in there and it has the horns. The horns and... and yeah. yeah. I'll show you a picture. Isn't that adorable? And there's an owl in here mm -hmm. and... Oh, Lots of it's cute just, things. Here's some more. The little hedgehog with the hair. Yeah. It's just so adorable. I could not pass up this book. And it was on sale, so... Awesome. You can't go wrong there. Okay, do you want to share one thing? Okay, so I have stuff that's in my stash for a future project, and then I have yarn cast on. Mm -hmm. I technically don't have a new outpost. No, but we can talk about this one. Oh, yeah, because I did about pull this, this out. Okay, so okay. the new thing is the pattern that we're going to use. The old thing is this Regia Perfect mm -hmm. six ply yarn. So it's, it's a, a DK. DK yarn. Mm -hmm. and if we didn't really have a good recipe or pattern for right. DK socks until we watched Rose Opal Knits podcast. Yeah. They published their own DK weight sock pattern for free. Yeah. So they have a, a blog now. Yep, they have their own website, yep. roseopalknits.com. If you go to that website, you can download this pattern for free. Mm -hmm. It has three sizes. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very well written. So yep. I am going to do two 16 inch circles because yeah. that is a technique I have never used before mm -hmm. and I'm all about trying new techniques. Because yeah. last winter they were talking about DK socks yes. and we went and got ourselves some Regia off I think mm -hmm. Etsy yeah. and we both have a six ply Regia in our stash so yes. we're thinking we'll both cast on soon. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Plus I have so many beautiful skeins uh. of Single, single that you can hold fingering weight double. And I might and just mix two that are contrasting colors, like one light, mm -hmm. one dark, and do kind of like a marled thing. That would be fun. Yeah. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Another thing I got in the mail was um, from Tall Pine Yarn. I saw yeah. this self-striping on Instagram. It's very pretty. And it just screamed, buy me, buy me now. So. Yeah. 
It is a 7525, 462 yards, so mm -hmm. I'll add this to my self striping stash. Okay. And, and then I'll, see that. I'll go on to our previous giveaway, not the last episode, the episode, Cherry Pie Cottage yeah, giveaway. Yeah, Cherry Pie Cottage giveaway. Mm -hmm. We kept the wildflower colorway, which she had in her last update. She so did. If you did, she did like it. So I caked so it up. So pretty. And it, so it is it is super pretty and I can't wait. I put it in these Star Wars yarn huggers just because I had 50 gram yarn huggers sitting around. And it will be on my needle soon. We yes. were going to split the yarn so I don't know if I'm going to knit them one at a time. You may have Since, the yarn, because I've okay. got the pink yarn from Chicken Lady, so okay, you can knit your awesome. socks as long as you want. Then I might pick out a pattern to go on top, because Ooh. it looks like such a beautiful colorway it would really to do show a up. textured pattern mm -hmm. on. So Definitely. Definitely. that will be on my needle soon. Okay, I ordered a, let me take it out of the little bag, a mint chocolate chip ice cream cone. Here. And... It, here we go. There you go. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. Yeah. And this is from Also Charming. And I think this is the person that I got my cinnamon roll from. And the reason I wanted it because I love mint chocolate chip ice yeah. cream. And Chicken Lady Fiber Arts had a mint chocolate chip. Yeah, and this is the dyer that you are knitting your two at a time socks that yes. you showed just now, the Lucky Strike color. This is a it's I think she has her yarn milled close to her, and it mm -hmm. has a really lovely, it's an 80-20. Yeah. But, but it's, it's just a ply plump. like a four ply. It yeah. is a four ply. It is a four ply, and it's just so mm -hmm. plump, and it makes such dense, thick socks. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're still figuring where they're going to fit in your tennis shoes. They stuff. will, but they're going to wear really, really well. Yeah. Without the scratchiness of a BFL. Mm -hmm. Um. So I got that to go with the, the, the mint charm. chocolate chip charm. It'll be super cute. And she sent this little box, and it's so cute. It is, look at how lovely that is wrapped. Yeah. It is Colorway Purple Haze. Now, did you order that? No, it just came with it, and it has yeah. all of her um, different bases. bases, and it's like a little sample box. That's really sweet. Isn't that great? You can see how it, I'm shaky today. Um, maybe yeah. you're a little more steady than I am. You can see that it's the same colorway, but each one takes the dye a little differently. So if you want to try a different base, now you've got a sample here, and you yeah. can see what it feels like and how it takes the dye. Like this must be her bulky or her iron. Um, that is her cashmere nylon merino. Okay. Ooh, yeah, and they're all named after chicken breeds. So, yeah, I thought that was just a super ingenious way to get people yeah. to see what else you have. Or, and, though, like, if you keep the box, you can figure out what base will work for your project just based on the feel of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So that was something that I thought was really cool. Yeah. So thank you very much for sending that. Mm -hmm. Um, you have okay. one other thing you want to talk about? Yes. Okay, because I like my sister's girlfriend card again, the one I knit her so much. I went into my stash and I apparently have a thing for black yarn <laughs> with bright colors and white and gray. So the first one that I'm going to fade for it will be the Jack Skellington color from my Halloween, Halloween advent, advent last year and it is Cherry Pie Cottage. And then this one is... Sheen Fibers? Yeah. Ching fibers in the panda colorway. So it's like a little bit half black and then these bright colors. Mm -hmm. And so that'll fade really nice. That'll fade nicely. And then this one is Walk Like a Cat, Talk Like a Fish by Spun Right Round. And I thought because the white in this one will go into the white and gray, gray. Mm -hmm. with the bright colors. And then I have a fourth skein coming and I'm hoping it'll work. It's a hedgehog fiber. Fingers crossed. So that is <clears throat> potentially a good 
caring. And that will not be on the needles very soon. I want to work on my two sweaters that yeah. I'm very keen to be seeing progress on, but that's a future, future cast on. Okay, okay so um, I bought the book Hooked on You by Kathleen Fuller. Mm -hmm. And it is about baseball and a yarn shop, and the yarn shop is, is loosely based off of Arkansas Yarn Company, and mm -hmm. she dyed up yarn to match the book cover. Yeah. And I got a little progress keeper that's an Arkansas state shape. Awesome. She has. Um, I ordered my book on Amazon, but you can order the the set. combo together. And then there is a free hat pattern called the Riley hat. And there's no picture, no picture on the pattern, but um, mm -hmm. you can find the Riley hat pattern. I'll put the link below yeah. where I got it. So I ordered the yarn to knit the Riley hat because I'm reading the book, and this book yeah. is so good. I think she has a second one coming out in January of 2022. Awesome. But if you like um, really good knitting stories. It's about a yarn shop and love and yep. it's just a nice, nice easy... Nice short fiction book. Yeah, it's a nice easy read. So I'm excited yep. to finish the book and mm -hmm. even reading has been slow lately. But yeah. that's what I've been reading and mm -hmm. this yarn is so beautiful with the little specks of hot pink and yellow in there yeah. and the teal. So Super fun. absolutely my colors. So I finished In the Woods by Tana French. Did I say the first name right? Yeah. Awesome, because I am bad with names. <laughs> um, it is um, a book series. It's the Dublin Murder Squad series, and there are six books. So I got the first and third a while back, mm -hmm. and then when I got home, I realized they're the first and third. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got the others that I was missing out of the series, and it was actually made into a Stars mini-series. So that's Dublin Murders on Stars, so I don't know if anybody's seen that. We don't have stars. But it's really good. <clears throat> it was about a detective, and then his childhood where there was a... Um, crime mystery his friends went missing and were never found and so there's two different kind of storylines and little flashbacks that he doesn't remember much I want to read so that. it is really good I do have to say the ending I wish would have wrapped things up tidier but the next one in the series ties in with this one where the other ones are based further back in time these are the most present books are the first two in the series. Interesting. So I'm wondering if they'll tie them together because I'd love for the story to be a little bit more closure to it. Hmm. I want to read that. It sounds really good. Yeah, you can definitely borrow <clears throat> it. Oh, and I realized so. I did a terrible job of describing this book, but it's good. Yeah. Trust me. Okay, so. we have a winner to announce. Yes. If you stayed with us this long, thank you so much. Okay, so it was for the Holly Press Fibers. And thank you, Holly Press, for yes. donating these beautiful minis. Elizabeth is really sweet. She is. Um, it is the Inconceivable Mini Set. And last I checked, she still had some in her shop. So if you really wanted it and you didn't win, then head over there. But the winner is Joan Bell. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Congratulations. We will get these in the mail as soon as we can. I'll Please. pop the email below. It's nightallfibers at gmail.com. If you just let us know your address, we will get them in the mail to you. Yeah, so congratulations, Joan. Yes. Hey. Um, and she said she would make scrappy socks with it, so I Ooh. think that will be beautiful. Look at this color combo. Yeah. Mint so, and blue. So me. Yes. Yes. Okay, so, okay, so thank you for watching, and... Uh, We'll be back hopefully in two weeks, maybe yeah. three, maybe four. <laughs> we but just we'll be back. We'll be back. Yeah. I and think going four weeks. Oh, about, I don't like doing that either. But our knitting mojo, I think if we just cast on a few fun things like DK socks. Ooh, yeah. That That'll might go fast be going too. Fast. Yep. Of course, maybe I should finish some of the socks I have on my needles first before I cast on more. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay. And if you're in the Fort Worth area in mm -hmm. um, on June twenty sixth. 
Yeah, June 26th, I'll be at Juju Knit. From 10 to 3. From 10 to 3 for a trunk show. So I uh, really enjoy going up there. Mm -hmm. And her shop is really sweet. So yes. I hope to see you there. And if not, we will see you next time in two weeks.